I'm gonna go with a delicate touch over the treehouse, off the trampoline, through the target. Oh, boom, beat that. I'm about to. I'm going off the rebound net, off the porch column, straight through the target while I go down the slide. You got no shot. The Eckridge Million Dollar Challenge is back. Enter at EckridgeFootball.com for your chance to win. Where's the wind? Yeah, it's really howling out. Welcome in, along with Eric Eager, I'm Steve Palazzolo, and this is the PFF College Top 25, brought to you by Eckridge, the official smoked sausage of the college football playoff. All right, Eric, we've got another iteration of the PFF College Top 25. It's all pulled straight from the PFF database. You run through all of the numbers to give us the best teams in the country. It's not necessarily resume-based. It's not always mm -hmm. going to be uh, the way the records you know, indicate wh where teams are going to land. It's all about what do we think is going to go for yep. going forward, who are the best teams. The first thing that I want to note here on this list, we still have Wisconsin at number two, a little bit higher than I think the consensus, and Georgia still sitting there at number three, but Georgia was very impressive against South yep. Carolina. How much <laughs> did they kind of bridge the gap on Wisconsin because last week we talked about how close numbers two through six were really in this ranking. Yeah, I think Wisconsin had an impressive second half. Uh, be that as it may, Georgia did you know beat a top 25 team in our minds pretty handily, and so they did rise uh, in their rating. Um, they're not quite you know eclipsing Wisconsin, but they're a team that I think we're very high on here uh, at three. So the other big notable drop here in the top six, we have Clemson going from four to number six. They beat Texas A&M by two points, yep. and I think it was kind of the story of Clemson's season or, or their team, really. The defensive line did their part. Clellan Farrell coming off the edge, Dexter Lawrence. I mean, they look great up front, but some really big question marks with Kelly Bryant at quarterback. Even though he made some big plays down the stretch, Trevor Lawrence comes in, the true freshman. He makes some nice plays, too. But I think Clemson, are they dropping because – of what's happening with their pass game? Yeah, they have uh, the worst passing grade among teams that have like the top 15 you know, raw grades uh, in college football. Uh, Bryant was the worst graded player on Clemson's offense on Saturday, and it's one of those things where we know that passing correlates to wins the most. If they're gonna be poor there, it's gonna overshadow their brilliance on the defensive front, as you said. Yeah, so Bryant, he had a couple nice, really, uh, really nice runs, and I'll tell you, the, the touchdown that he had late in the game, it was unbelievable, big time mm -hmm. throw, put it right on his receiver's hands, just need to see more consistency right. out of him to help Clemson maybe solidify that top four spot right now, sitting at number six. Looking a little bit further down the list, I look at Stanford, the biggest riser on the list here in the top ten, and they do it after beating a team that we had much higher than others in yep. USC. So I think that probably weighs in a little bit higher when it comes to modeling this. Yeah, I mean, it, the, the thing that's going to get you raising the highest in this rating system is beating a team that's better than you in the rating system and doing so handily. And so that's exactly what Stanford did. Uh, you know, even though they've still struggled, right, Bryce Love had to break a tackle on 10 of his 22 carries. Um, they've only been successful on 50, less than 15% of their rushes. But, you know, oh, that's they, extremely low. That's, yeah, that's not good at all. It's, you're usually in the 35 to 50% range uh, in college football. So that's that's pretty poor. They they improved this. You know he still got 136 yards, but 85 of them had to be after contact. Whereas with with USC, J T. Daniels again the worst graded player on that offense uh, on Saturday. He's probably going to have to improve for them to sort of maintain their status as a top 25 team in this rating system. Yeah, Stanford becomes an interesting team now because they're supposed to be this power running team behind Bryce Love, but they do have K J Costello who. We mentioned last week, he's willing to take those downfield chances to guys like J.J. Arcega Whiteside. And Arcega Whiteside's probably the best player on the team so far this season. The biggest riser in the top 25, now up to number 18, is Mississippi State. And I know we love talking about the pass game here and all that stuff. And I'm a big passing game guy, but I appreciate good play in the trenches. And when you look at Mississippi State and their defensive line, led by Jeffrey Simmons, Montez Sweat, their offensive line, was outstanding these first couple weeks, especially against Kansas State. They're really built from the inside out, and they've got one of the best combinations of offensive and defensive lines in the country. Yeah, and those matter in our in our rating system. So if you're truly elite there, that will propel you, and that's what happened. I mean, when they beat you know Kansas State on Saturday, uh, 31 to 10, it was really very much because of those two two things, and and we gave them a lot of credit for it. Yeah, we mentioned USC, the biggest faller in the top 25. They're down to number 20. Uh, still, it's one of those games where you don't. They didn't give up a ton yeah. defensively. 
Does that go overlooked sometimes? It feels like a game where they didn't really, uh, they didn't really have a chance in the second half. You know, they had a few opportunities early. But when it comes to the defense keeping them in a game, is that going to keep USC sneaky lurking around this top 25 the entire season? I do think so. I think, you know, they gave up 17 points to Stanford. That is pretty impressive, right, given given the, the aforementioned things that you said about their offense. Um, it's just, you know, JT Daniels has struggled. I think if he ever turns the corner, that paired with the defense, I think that's why, probably why we still have them in the top 20 here. And when you talk about a true freshman, it does take time, obviously, especially for a quarterback sometimes. Uh, to get a feel for the college game. Let's look ahead to this week as far as top 25 matchups. Using the PFF uh, top 25, we have number 11 LSU going to number 8 Auburn. To me, the big question mark here is still pointing back to the past game. LSU, Joe Barrow, he's been okay these first couple weeks. I think there's a lot of hype that he's the guy at LSU, maybe compared to what they've had in recent years, but this will be a big test going to Auburn, who, again, sitting at number eight in our rankings. Yeah, LSU's been 11th, you know, basically the entire time we've had this, you know, this rating system. They have jumped substantially in the AP polls. I'm wondering, you know, how, you know, how the public and how the market sort of, like, looks at them. Um, But we've sort of been consistent on them for some of those same reasons, the uncertainty at quarterback. Even though he's played well early on, uh, we don't necessarily know if that'll be the case moving forward. Boise State's going to be taking on Oklahoma State. Boise at 16, Oklahoma State at 13 in our rankings. This will be a fun little test because we've always had Oklahoma State a little bit higher in all of our early polls compared to, say, the AP. Uh, Boise State looks like the old Kellen Moore, Boise State. Broncos the other night over 800 yards of offense against UConn. Brett Rippon is a senior. He's always been a really highly graded quarterback right now over 90 in our grade. So Boise State looks like this old Boise State team ready to make a move. Yeah, this will be a big test. I think if you look at this game just, you know, from the AP's perspective, you probably would favor Boise State. But from our rating system, you probably would favor Oklahoma State. And so, you know, this is a a place where we really get to test our rating system here. So now the other game is Ohio State against TCU, number five against number 19. Ohio State, how how far can they jump here? I know it's tough. You, you can't just run all the math in your head, but yep. Ohio State at number five against a number 19 team, they can make a massive jump if they win and win handily in this one. Yes? Yeah, a, a convincing win would, would put them, you know, it, given, given what happens, uh, you know, ahead of them, could put them into the top two or two to four. So, uh, I you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to this game. TCU, a, a slow start against SMU on Friday right. night, but, uh, you know, eventually, eventually turn the corner there. It'll be interesting. Um, we have them a little bit lower than the market does. So uh, we would probably favor Ohio State relative to the market. But, um, you know, it'll be an interesting test for the Buckeyes. We also have a nice Ohio State defensive line video on the YouTube channel. Be sure to check that out. I think they're the best in the entire nation. So there you have it. It's your PFF College Top 25. It's all been brought to you by Eckridge, the official smoke sausage of the college football playoff. And don't forget to pick up Eckridge smoke sausage at your local grocery store for this weekend's tailgate or home gate party. And make sure to visit EckridgeFootball.com for great game day recipes and to enter the season-long million-dollar challenge.